I think we're about to see a huge leap forward in 3D printing technology and I wanted to share that system with you today. I don't actually have anything in the shop with me because it hasn't yet been released, but what I wanted to do is show you what I saw, which I was completely blown away by, and then we'll take a look and break it down to see if we can figure out how it actually is going to work. So let's get into it. So Aaron at 802 Garage put me on to this video. So thank you, Aaron, for that. I will put a link to his channel down there below if you want to check out his channel on TikTok. So this is by Bontech. It is called the Index System, INDX. I believe IN stands for induction heating and DX stands for dynamic extruder or dynamic extrusion. Let me play you the video that I saw first. I'm going to play it at regular speed and then we'll go through and see if we can figure out how it actually works. So they did a really good job on this video in hiding the critical components so we can't really figure out exactly how it works. But I think if we slow it down and maybe even stop it, we should be able to get a good sense of how it's gonna work. So I think this is a Voron 2.4 and we have, you can see multiple different colors in here. I'm not sure if they're different materials or not, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine. I believe they said in one video that I saw that these were 35 millimeters, so a little less than an inch and a half apart. Not sure if that's center to center, but to me it looks like that is the distance in between them. So that does give us a good idea of how many you'd be able to fit into your printer. It looks like there's a little bit of space on each side as well, possibly to avoid some sort of collisions. I'm just looking at these parts. They look like they're nylon SLS printed, so heat resistant. We see what looks like a heat sink on here. And then this nozzle incorporated with uh, this other piece. We'll take another look at this in a minute. If I slow down this part of the video, we should be able to see what's happening a bit better. So it comes up, it grabs the tool, and then it pulls it down into position. And that reminds me a lot of what you would see on a CNC machine. So here is a tool holder with the caught, and this, this is for a CNC. I bought this one for my lathe, but it has this taper in here, so I'm assuming they have some sort of a taper system so that they have a dedicated area that will seat positively, and it also, because of that taper, can be removed really easily and ejected, and then another tool can be pulled up into place. So it doesn't look anything like this, but I think it might use a similar kind of uh, approach to it. It has grabbed one of the tools and we can see right behind it that this is all FDM 3D printed. And there are these elongated slots in here as well. And we saw that when it grabbed the tool, it pulled it up into position. So that's why I believe those slots are elongated. Now what's inside of these might be either a magnet or it could be a steel piece, like a screw for example. So on the opposing side, we should see uh, either a magnet or something steel as well. And there it is there. We have these. To me, these look like they are magnets just because of the slight radius on here and the kind of chrome finish. But that's how it looks to me like it's mounted to the frame of the printer. We also have what looks like a vent so that we have some airflow for the heat sink. And then I believe these are just LED lights in here. I just saw something, so if we go back just barely, look at the frame in this area. Oh, right there. So it looks to me like this is a guide for PTFE tubing. So at some point, maybe the guide existed on the right-hand side first where we didn't really see it, but I think we can see some of the tubes coming through there. So 
this is the tube coming up. It comes back around. It looks like it's mounted to a piece of spring steel maybe. It comes back around and then it's guided through the side here. I will say that this one on the inside looks like it's quite a tight bend. It probably would be better to have a bit more gradual bend than that because some of the filaments will not want to take that, but I will leave it to their expertise. So with no tool installed, we can see the pinion gear, which looks like it is driving these two large gears. I'm not 100% sure if that's the case. There needs to be some way of pulling that tool up into place. So it's going to be hidden away in here. When that heat sink comes in into this area, it has these tabs on it. I'll show you in just a second what I mean. And then we have the ventilation on the back of where the heat sink goes as well. Down below, this looks to be like the induction heating coils and they should be some sort of copper, copper alloy. It's going to heat directly around where the filament is, which means that it's a much more even heat. It's a faster heat. It's far more efficient as well, just like you'd see on an induction um, stovetop that induces a current into a conductive material, which does raise one point as well, which is if you want to feed a conductive filament through here, what would happen in that case? So if we look at the bottom of this heat sink right in this area, you can see these little tapered tabs, and I think that is where it's able to pull it up into position. There's a taper on this side, there's a taper on this side, and the same goes for the opposing sides. And it, that should allow it to seat fairly well, and it might be grabbing it from somewhere else, also possibly on the top, or possibly just all the way around the bottom here. It's a little bit difficult to see. They have done a really good job with the video in not showing exactly how that part of the system functions. So down below the heat sink, we have this nozzle incorporated with what I think is a ferrous metal or some sort of conducted metal in the center. Now, I'm not sure what this material is made from, from around this area. It would probably need to be a ceramic of some kind because it's going to get very hot and it has, of course, the nozzle incorporated into it. And it looks like we have the heat break right in here as well. An induction type probe here for bed leveling. And here is their Benchy. It looks to me like it's a 0.2 millimeter layer height. It is using four different colors. The quality of the print actually looks pretty good. I don't really see any major defects in here. Of course, they're going to show the best prints that they were able to achieve as well, but I'd assume that they're using PLA. This is going to be printed in an open environment as well, so it would be a little bit more difficult to print with other materials. So as I was making this video, they dropped another video going into a little bit more detail, so I will play that one for you as well. Front bay to load and unload the tool, simplifying switching filaments. The dynamic extruder self-adjusts to the optimal pretension required to print any material at any requested volumetric flow and under any 3D printing conditions. I kind of thought that this was going to be a system where it automatically calibrated, but I'm not sure that that is the case. If you're going to be printing with all those different materials and all those different colors and potentially different brands, if it doesn't automatically calibrate, that means you should have to do it yourself, which causes you to go through, well, possibly hours of calibration. That could be something that they might want to consider building in if they haven't already done it, or maybe I'm misinterpreting what they're saying there. Index tools use small heat dissipators with simple nozzles, the conduits where plastic is melted. There is no heater, thermistor, or heat block on these tools. When I hear heat block, I think of heat break. I'm not sure if they're thinking about the same thing or not. So again, by addressing the underlying issues, they were able to keep the cost low, which makes all this much more affordable for you and for me. And I think that's why this is also going to be such a game changer for us. The Index Smart Tool Head uses induction to heat up the nozzles with no contact and reads their temperature without touch. The wireless tools are therefore easy to pick and drop. So there's something interesting here. This is just an animation, but typically we have a silicone sock that goes around the entire thing. There is no silicone sock here. Looks to me like this has to be some kind of a ceramic material. This being wrapped right around the nozzle and right around the heating, I think they called it a heating core or a tube of some kind. It must be something that's highly resistant to temperature. 
So no silicone sock anymore. Hopefully this is also like a non-stick material. If you ever see how an induction heating system works, it induces a current inside of the material without actually contacting it. So that is far quicker, but it also is much more energy efficient as well. The index nozzles broke the mold and are like none other before. It might just be me, but it looks to me like this one is on some funny angle. I'm not sure if it's been melted or if it's just a prototype. And we can see that looks to me like this is a magnet that's been inserted in there. Low thermal mass minimizes inertia and transfers all heating power directly to melting plastic. Index takes around 12 seconds to complete a tool change and even less to reach printing temperature. So that means that by the time it goes over, it finishes that tool change, goes over to the purge tower, does a little bit of purging. And I'm not sure that it's really gonna need to do that much purging because you're never going to be changing colors anymore. So all that you wanna do is make sure that the ooze is cleaned up if there is any ooze. And that's about it. Probably the oozing is gonna be less of an issue too because if it is inductive heating, that means that it's going to heat up much more quickly, less time for oozing. So hopefully that also addresses some of those other underlying problems. Saves on filament. There's no filament pruning, cutting, or pooping. They are giving a good indication there of how this system is gonna be so much different from anything else that we're used to. So if you can save on waste, you're not gonna be doing nearly as much cleanup afterward. You're not gonna be throwing your filament away. And of course, you're not gonna just be wasting time pooping out filament that doesn't need to be in order to actually make something. So uh, I think that they, again, have done a pretty good job of addressing the underlying issues and a lot of the complaints to do with current systems that we use for multicolor printing. Saves on tool heads. Only one tool head is required, the smart tool head. Saves on adding tools. From what I read, it's gonna be $35, I think that's US, for each tool and then $250 or so for the actual tool head. Uh, so overall, I think we're in around the 425 mark if let's say you wanted five tools. But of course you can just start with one and then just build on top of that if you wanted to. You can start simple, you just have a tool head and one tool or maybe two tools and you just add more as you have more need. Extra materials, nozzles or colors run on a portable thin passive tools. Saves on energy too. Index is fast to heat up and requires no preheating. With Index, tool changers will be simple, flexible, and affordable. A tool made by creators for all 3D printing creators out there. Bontech Index. Multiple technologies, countless ways to create. I do think that there is a ton of good stuff here. The biggest issue I think with this system is gonna be how we can put it into our existing printers. And of course with bamboo, they've kind of locked their printers out from being tweaked and adjusted. So not really sure if that's gonna be a possibility. If we go over to Prusa, now this is the Mark IV S and it's a bed slinger. I don't think the index is gonna be allowed to be used on a bed slinger, but this printer will be converted eventually to a Core 1. And I actually think the Core 1 would probably be perfect for the index system because Prusa has always had these open source type printers. That means we can tweak just about everything that we want. And hopefully they've been working together and they can find a way to make their systems compatible. For the Bamboo H2D, I do not think, again, just like the X1C, that there's gonna be any possibility of modifying this to have an index system. This printer is very good. It's highly accurate. I've been printing 0.2 millimeter multicolor prints on here with very good success but I don't think there's any way that this can be converted or if there's any reason to convert this to the index system. It, it wouldn't really make any sense to do that. So how about the Chidi Plus 4? Well, I actually think that this might be the perfect use case for it, aside from maybe a Voron printer. There's lots of space up inside here. There's lots of headroom in here, probably not quite enough to get those PTFE tubes to curve around the back. So maybe there needs to be an extension added on to here and the glass top would be raised up. But these printers are open, which means we can modify just about anything that we want. We have access to the configuration files. So just like the Prusa, I think that the Cheaties will be possibly able to be adapted. I've actually reached out to Cheaty to see if they're aware of the index system and hopefully they're able to find a way to get that to be incorporated into this printer. So really looking forward to that. So with a system that's like that, with a bunch of really small tools, what I was thinking was somebody could 
create a way of having a tool carousel and have this sit directly outside of the printer as long as it was fairly open and that way it wouldn't take up much space in the printer but also would allow us to basically load a ton of different tools on here and maybe it can't rotate 360 degrees because we have the PTFE tubes up there but it could rotate 120 degrees or something along those lines. Now another idea even taking it further than that would be to have a conveyor belt system and with some automation involved it could actually bring the next tool up into place place and then have that tool brought outside and you can have an entire wall of different tools. So that's another opportunity. One other thing that came to mind as a kind of a question is if this is all going to be integrated, this is from the H2D, but just picture that it's the one from the index. If it's going to be all one piece and they're $35 US per piece, you don't want to have to replace them very often. And with it all being integrated, you can't replace just the nozzle tip. So hopefully it should be hardened steel at a minimum. And that way it lasts quite a while, even if you're going to be printing with abrasives. So I think this is going to be an absolute game changer for 3D printing. It's also going to keep the price down for us to make it much more affordable to get into multicolor, multi-material printing. And there are some other benefits like the reduced waste almost to nothing really, so it seems. Now, of course, there are probably going to be some things that we're not aware of based off of this video. This is an ad, so they're not going to show you all of the things that might be problematic with this system. I think Bontech in general is a pretty well-known company. They do a really good job of making high-end products, the products that actually last. I'm very much looking forward to this and hopefully I can get my hands on one of these systems and actually test it out for you guys to see. Thanks to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and thank you for watching. Take care and I hope to see you on the next one.